Hello everyone, I'm CryptoNodes. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the latest big news to do with Cardano. We're also gonna be taking a look at price analysis as well as a few other big things. So if you guys like anything I bring to you, don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, or share the video for more. Let's see if we can smash this video for 300 likes. The amount of support you guys have been showing me has been absolutely incredible. So let's try to keep it up. I also wanna know down below, do you think 2021 will be the year for Cardano? With that, let's jump straight into the video. So we'll start off by taking a look at the market as a whole. At the moment, it is still looking incredibly strong overall. Bitcoin is back above $18,000, which is absolutely incredible. The rest of the market is responding nicely, but the important question is, is how will the altcoins do in 2021? Bitcoin $18,166, Ethereum up to $486, XLP at $0.30, cents. Litecoin up to $81, Chainlink up to $13.83, Polkadot up 10% to $5.18 and Cardano at $0.10.7. Cents. But in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the latest news to do with Cardano, so let's start off with the first article. And this article says Cardano, IOHK releases metadata server Smash. The publication of the metadata server Smash serves to enhance the decentralization of the Cardano blockchain. Smash is initially hosted by OHK but can only be adopted by the community. IOHK, the development company behind Cardano, has introduced the new component of the ecosystem called Smash. Smash is a metadata server that ensures that the information about each stake pool is relevant and valid. The goal of IOHK is to ensure as far as possible that the influence of bad actors, such as the potential of attacks, spoof pools and trolls, on the system is minimised. According to IOHK, the decentralization of nodes is a key element in Cardano's success. However, in order to keep track of the information of the stake pools and to simplify the choice of pool for the delegates, it is crucial that the data is valid. Therefore, Smash was developed, a server that supports operators and ADA owners by validating information about stake pools and storing it as metadata. In concrete terms, Smash works in such a way that each stake pool is registered together with the metadata required for the calculation of the rewards. This includes owner data, the name of the pool, pool ticker, homepage, and a sort description that is not stored in the blockchain. This is therefore important to make this information visible and accessible, says IOHK. Smash also has the following tasks. As well as ensuring that registered stake pools are valid, Smash Metadata Server helps to avoid duplicated ticker names or trademarks and ensures that they do not feature content that the Cardano users are likely to find offensive. Given that scams, trolls and abusive behaviour are an unfortunate part of life online, we had to find a way of filtering potentially problematic actors out of the playing field. What is Cardano Smash? A Smash server can aggregate, retrieve, and store stake pool metadata. The first generation of Smash is provided and hosted by IOHK. Smash's information serves the Deadless Wallet and was previously collected off-chain and retrieved from each stake pool individually, which required a lot of network connections and effective performance. Although Smash will initially be centralized at IOHK, it will not be able to provide a centralized solution. However, the code of the Smash server is open source so that it can be used by anyone. In this sense, IOHK said, so we hope that in the future the Smash approach will be adopted by the community for decentralized metadata. Deadless will allow users to configure any server of their choice to browse custom state pool lists, for example, charity pools, bare metal pools, or pools from certain regions for ADA holders who prefer to support state pool businesses with a particular focus. So overall, this is good news for Cardano. Even though their price action is not doing much, they are still growing at an accelerating rate with still a lot more to come. I am personally very bullish on Cardano and I think 2021 for a lot of altcoins will be very, very profitable. This next article I want to show you and it says Cardano. IOHK provides update on Gogan's progress. Updates on Cardano's development progress will be made under a new format every two weeks. Introduce new version of GHC 8.10 for the development of smart contracts on Cardano for the Plutus platform. IOHK has introduced a new format for publishing updates related to the development of Gogan. Via Twitter, Cardano's developer company reported that every two weeks they will release a video update on Gogan with Gogan Project Manager and the Cardano Project Manager. The new format has been conceived to be a space where users and the Cardano community can have a panoramic view of the progress in different projects that make up the Cardano ecosystem, including Gogan and its associated components. In addition, the developers will present a roadmap of what users can expect between each update. 
and it says down here significant progress has been made in Cardano's decentralized finance capabilities with the financial contracts in Marlow. The manager director of Gogan stated that they have received a positive response from the community about the Marlow Alpha program. At the same time, the team have introduced a new educational material about Marlow that can be accessed from YouTube. The team is focusing on upcoming releases in the line with Plutus application framework readiness. Now, personally, I think this is good for Cardano purely because they are keeping us updated with the Gogan progress. Gogan is going to be absolutely huge when it is properly released. As Charles Hoskinson keeps saying, it is not a light switch and it will not come on just like that. It will be released in stages and the fact that they are keeping us updated on this is very good in my opinion because it will mean that if people do start to get worried of the progress of Cardano, if they do not move, then they can simply keep updated with what's happening and know when the full release is coming. We're now going to take a look at a clip from Charles Hoskinson talking about the presidential election. Only 71 million are concerned. Yeah, because the 74 million who won don't care. Uh, here's the thing. People only get concerned about the fidelity of the voting system when their candidate loses. I've never heard of an election where someone wins and the winner goes out there and says, thank you so much for electing me, but I have some concerns about our election system. I just can't remember a time uh, when that's ever happened. Uh, you know, the electoral college system is a great example. We never heard anything about the electoral college system when Bill Clinton was president. No one talked about it. It wasn't a big thing because he won. 1992, 96, yeah, he won. Got, got all the votes, right? Everybody was fine with it. When Bush won, suddenly it is the biggest topic in the world. We have to replace the electoral college. It's just, it's an anachronism. It's totally unfair and rah, rah, rah. People don't like the voting systems that tend to get rid of the candidates that they favor. And people like the voting systems that tend to keep the candidates that they favor in power. That's never been the point. The point is you think about everybody and you think about overall outcomes, regardless of the particular candidates, the particular political parties, and you ask yourself, what would you like your voting system to produce for you? The first thing that's completely lost in the American left is that we do not live in a single country. We live in a unified country of many states, and there are checks and balances here. The United States is a union of states, and the states have semi-autonomy. So you don't go and build a voting system that says only four or five states have total dominion over all the other states, and no state has any say or choice outside of these four or five population centers. Now, why do they push for that system? Because particular political party knows if they get it, they will always win the elections. It's much easier to win the national vote with the way that they've structured things. I hope you enjoyed that clip by Charles Hoskinson. I want to know your opinions down below. What do you think of the current system? This is the next part I want to talk about and it is a price analysis of Cardano and it says ADA slash USD. The bulls pushed Cardano above the downtrend line on November 17th but they have not been able to clear the hurdle at 11.4 cents. This suggests that the bears are defending the overhead resistance. However, if the ADA slash USD pair does not dip back below the downtrend line, the bulls will once again try and propel the price above the overhead resistance. If they manage to do that, the pair will complete a double bottom pattern that has a target objective of 13.9 cents. If the RSI breaks and sustains above 60, it could signal a possible pickup in the momentum that could result in a break above 11.4 cents. This bullish view will be invalidated if the pair breaks below the 9.8 support. And if we take a look at Cardano's current price, it is at 10.6 cents, so it is fighting to stay above that resistance level. I am personally hoping if we can stay above this level and we can fight past 11 cents, we have the next target of 13 cents, then 15 cents, then 18 cents, and then 20 cents. If we can get to 20 cents, then that is when, in my opinion, things will start to get real. It's just a matter of time of how long will that take. Now, this is the last article I want to talk about in today's video, and it says IOHK chief scientists discuss the advantages of Cardano reward sharing scheme. Chief scientist of IOHK Cardano enthusiast wrote an article entitled The General Perspective on Staking in Cardano. He thinks Cardano's most important and fundamental goal is the concept of decentralization. As protocols and parameters are the foundation for any blockchain, the planned changes of Cardano parameters will impact the staking ecosystem thus the reward sharing scheme. 
Besides community as a key to project success, he also highlights that the observance, interpretation and social norms play a crucial role in shaping its resilience and longevity. And it says down here, to reach Cardano's objectives, he believes that there are two different paths for staking. Pledging, which is a stake pool operators and delegating for non-operated delegators, the scheme seems like EOS's delegated proof of stake consensuous, but with more focus on decentralization. In the end, he lists guidance for delegators, pool operators and exchanges to reach Cardano's objectives. It is uncertain how all involved will react to the new staking scheme and how this will influence Cardano's ADA's price. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is absolutely everything I've got for you in today's video. If you have enjoyed anything I've brought to you, don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, or share the video for more. Let's see if we can smash that 300 like target. You guys have been incredible recently. Let's see if we can keep it up. I also want to know your thoughts and opinions down below about today's topics and Cardano in general. With that, I've been CryptoNobes. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you in my next video. Peace.